Commissioners, Greg Claxton with the Planning Department. I'll be giving you your first Nashville Next implementation update, uh, talking about uh, capital improvements planning. Um, as you know, the Charter requires that Planning Commission uh, recommend a prioritized list of capital improvements each year to the Mayor and Metro Council. With the adoption of National Next, we've begun working on uh, improving the uh, planning process for capital projects to promote, uh, obviously, more effective and efficient spending, greater transparency, and alignment with long-term community goals. Um, throughout Nashville Next, uh, we presented a few different uh, ways of uh, understanding and visualizing the condition of Nashville's infrastructure. Um, neither of these, none of these uh, quite capture everything uh, completely well, uh, but they, they both paint a picture of um, kind of need for long-term uh, capital planning and, and coordination. Uh, first, we showed uh, uh, our future needs over the next five years, starting in 2012, of about $4.8 billion in uh, capital projects, compared to spending over the prior five years of about $1.2 billion. Um, we'll see in a moment that that gap uh, can, can be a, a long-term issue. Um, we'll also see a little bit later on that there are some uh, concerns about how well that captures all of our needs. Uh, second, uh, at the start of Nashville Next, the um, Music City Infrastructure Report was issued. This was a uh, group of uh, outside folks looking in at, at uh, the city's infrastructure and assessing it. Uh, we don't agree with all of these ratings, uh, but they also paint a picture of uh, some areas of concern, some areas where we're doing well, um, that you know just provided a different perspective on uh, some of our needs for the future. Uh, one, a couple of things that, that I want to highlight is where infrastructure needs come from. Uh, first, all of uh, Nashville's very extensive capital assets degrade over time through use or just age. Uh, the chart on the left shows uh, a performance over time, and you can see once you hit a certain point, hit a certain point, you degrade very quickly. The chart on the right shows how you can extend the life of infrastructure through uh, regular maintenance. Of course, as you defer maintenance uh, for longer and longer, it gets more and more expensive to uh, restore the functioning of a, a particular piece of infrastructure. The other side is uh, simply keeping up with population growth or raising uh, levels of service. This is an example from the 2008 Parks Master Plan uh, showing in yellow uh, areas of the county that have a surplus of different kinds of parks and then are, uh, areas of the county in pink that have a, a deficit. Um, Obviously, this is a little out of date, but it just conveys the idea that as you grow, if you're going to continue to maintain a constant level of service or increased service, you need to expand your infrastructure, whether that's parks, roads, sewer, or what have you. Um, as we've gone through Nashville Next, um, a couple of things have become very clear. Infrastructure needs are very different based on your location, uh, and, and that has a lot of ramifications for the capital improvements budget. One of the big things that Nashville Next is, is building on in, in terms of supporting the community is a sh continued shift to infill. Um, however, that poses uh, some issues for capital projects, uh, greater difficulty in acquiring land and facilities, particularly the cost, uh, more complications in maintaining or upgrading facilities, and then both of those combine uh, to, to really increase the need to co-locate facilities or coordinate infrastructure uh, work. At the same time, we do expect continued uh, growth in suburban areas. Some of that will take the form of retrofitting older suburban areas, which you know, has a lot of same issues as the infill. Um, but then on the other side, we also need to match uh, infra infrastructure in investments as uh, new greenfield, greenfield development happens. And at, at, when we adopted Nashville Next, we had some discussion about our infrastructure deficiency areas. Uh, program and uh, an action in Nashville Next recommends expanding that to a broader uh, view of the county. So that's another thing we'll have to coordinate with the capital uh, improvement process. Um, we've been working a lot with this year's capital improvement budget to, you know, just to, to try to get our hands around everything that's going on within it. Um, this chart shows the cost of CIB projects per year. If one project uh, extends across multiple years, takes three years to build, it shows up in each year. Um, what you'll see is that uh, the, the budget is heavily, heavily weighted towards the very first year of, of, of the plan. Uh, what that means is that the out years are primarily used uh, to track multi-year projects. If it takes three years to build a, a new school, that cost shows up in all three of those years. Um, what it means is we're not using the capital improvements budget right now as a tool for long-term planning and coordination. A lot of that uh, long-term planning is happening by individual departments. You know, they tend to have a, a good sense of their long-term needs, but we don't have a place right now where all of that comes together and we can see how those needs overlap. 
Um, another issue with the, the current CIB that we're going to be uh, working with over the next year or two is that a lot of the, some of the projects have an unclear status. So out of about 630 projects, 400 were resubmitted from a prior budget um, as not yet started. Um, you'll see on the chart, um, about 100 of those were originally submitted prior to 2005. Um, it's not clear how many of those are still relevant. Um, we don't know for sure that they're not relevant, um, but one of the things we'll, we'll be working with departments on over the coming years, or over the coming year or two, is you know, really trying to separate which ones are, are still needed and which ones can get dropped. Um, We've got a tremendous opportunity right now. Not only is there a great deal of community energy over the adoption of Nashville Next, uh, but the finance department is updating their budgeting software. They're actually overhauling their entire system. Uh, that's great news for us because it's much easier to coordinate uh, kind of the things that we can ask departments to submit to us through budget system um, if, if we can work with them as they create it rather than going back and trying to add new things or retrofit an older system. Uh, we also have some prior work that uh, planning staff did in 2011 and 2012 that gives us a really solid foundation already for uh, making some of these uh, assessments, and we're going to build on that. Um, when we look to see how uh, projects align with Nashville Next, there's two big things that we're looking for. First is uh, how many of the guiding principles are they supporting, and we'll be developing criteria so we know exactly what we mean when a project expands accessibility or champions the environment. And the other thing is, how well does it align with our overall growth and preservation concept map, uh, the areas that we want to preserve or the areas that we want to grow? Um, in addition to those two, uh, the plan also proposes a, a range of uh, projects. Uh, we've got several uh, transportation projects from the, the long-range transit corridors, as well as uh, countywide and community plan priorities for walking projects, biking projects, and street projects. We also worked with a small number of departments to look out 25 years to see what their sense of their needs were so we could start uh, you know, seeing what does it look like to actually plan out that far. Um, we have worked that with, worked with uh, libraries, fire, and water and sewer on this. Um, this was a fairly simple exercise. It's not a terribly extensive thing, but it gives us, we think, a good foundation for working with other departments to do a similar look ahead uh, so we can get a sense of you know, where there are opportunities for coordination. Uh, we're developing our process right now. A couple of key things that, that we're working on. Uh, first is, like I said, we're coordinating with finance on their new system. Uh, we're developing a public involvement strategy uh, we want to continue to work with departments, understand their plans and needs, uh, and we want to develop this, th these criteria for assessing capital projects uh, for, their, uh, for urgent health and safety needs, alignment with Nashville Next, and mayor and council priorities. Uh, we're also developing uh, kind of a publicly viewable way to map proposed projects and see how they connect to uh, kind of infrastructure needs and uh, areas through a, a, a development as a support system. Uh, this will probably be, this will be a multi-year process to get fully underway, uh, but our goal is to have some aspect of all of these different pieces um, in the first year, in next year's capital improvements budget. Um, at your retreat, we're looking forward to working with you to figure out the level of involvement and oversight that the Planning Commission wants to have in this, whether it's regular updates at uh, these hearings, uh, at the occasional work session, or a subcommittee. Um, and then last, I just want to give you a sense of the timing uh, for this next year. Uh, we're working on the process development now, you know, using the, the current CIB as our uh, sort of test sounding board. Uh, we'll be doing department outreach later this fall, uh, doing some public engagement in probably in October and November. Uh, for this year, this will probably uh, weigh a little bit more heavily towards uh, education and outreach with a little bit of involvement and engagement, but we really want to kind of build the expertise among the community in you know, sort of understanding how capital projects relate to long-range plans. Uh, in January, there's a formal kickoff for CIB. We will, have been working, we will have been working with departments for a couple months at that point, but that's when they start submitting projects. Those projects per the charter are due in mid-February. Uh, in mid-April, your recommendations are due to uh, the mayor, and then by May 15th, the mayor's recommendations are due to council. 